Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well, it's time for part four. I think it's part four. I can't quite remember. I've lost track. Whichever part it is, it's time for a new installment of top VST plugins out there for sound design and uh, crazy sonic mayhem, sonic naughtiness, naughty sounds. As you know, I like um, plugins that kind of turn sounds into other sounds and it's very weird and exciting and glitchy and sometimes a little offensive, sometimes quite beautiful. It, it really depends. Um, so what have we got uh, this time? Today we've got from Devious Machines, Infiltrator. Let's have a look at it. So right off the bat, I can tell you that the first thing that I like about this is scalable interface lovely stuff because I'm so old and warty I can't see without my glasses so I can scale this nice and big on my nice big screen so what is infiltrator infiltrator is a multi effects processor um, that does all kinds of different effects different modulation effects different distortions some reverbs and stuff like that comb filters etc and you can interact with how those um, sounds process in various ways including a sequencer uh, an uh, envelope follower and also with MIDI. Right now we're looking at the default state. You can see that this is just kind of cycling around. Um, each effect kind of has its own kind of, um, I guess you would call it like a sort of curve editor that can be treated in m various ways. So let's um, run some sound into it. I've got this recording here of me doing my best I can to play the aim and break on the drums. Ah. Okay, so right away, what's it doing? So this is currently, I believe, a low pass filter. So if we look at what's going on here, this editor is cycling round and round and it's doing a sweep here set by this curve. And you can see if you look down here, that curve is affecting this parameter. As I turn that down, we're increase, uh, decreasing the, the modulation or rather the uh, the range in which it sweeps I'm gonna have a different curve here like this okay and then we can set with this how much we actually want the curve from the sequencer to modulate this parameter so I can move that around it's very very nicely done and we can go like the opposite direction if we want Yep, I like that. I like what they've done there. That's very nice. So essentially, it's a uh, let's stop that. So essentially, it is a sort of step sequencing effect modulator, I suppose. Um, let's explore it some more. So there are lots of different types of effects. We've got 10 different slots for effects up here. And we can put them in like any order we want. We can like move them around and all this sort of stuff. But let's just concentrate on this one. So that was a low pass filter. Let's maybe have a look at the comb filter. Let's fire off the transport again. So you can hear. Let's turn that down a little bit there. Okay. So you can hear that that's whizzing past according to this curve here. And I can. Look at that filter graph, lovely stuff. Increase the resonance here. Yeah. Okay, can you see where this is going? Yeah, so we've got different types of like preset curves that we can have like sort of sweeps up and down like that. But if at any point we want to like, you know, draw our own, we just kind of click in here and we add like more shapes like this. We can just sort of draw in any any kind of way we want. We can snap them to the grid or not at all and just place them wherever we want. I'm going to leave the snap on and then if we like, you know, if we click and drag, we can move these two up and down like that. So this is fun. This is lots of fun to do all kinds of crazy mangles, crazy Mrs. Mangle stuff, you know. But we don't actually have to use the sequencer. We can actually use, um, I believe we can use this envelope follower down here. So whilst um, this is actually sequ sequencing away, we can manually adjust the cutoff of this comb filter here like that. 
but we can also use incoming audio um, set by this. This is a um, an envelope um, follower for the incoming audio. And we can look at how that's behaving here. So if I fire this off now, you can see that that's the incoming audio. And this is how much we're modulating this parameter by the incoming um, envelope. It's very loud. Turn that down a bit there. Okay. So you can see what's going on there. And we can obviously increase how much we apply the envelope. And we can also choose how much the uh, the actual shape of the envelope. So now I'm adjusting the uh, audio envelope decay time. That's very slow. That's very fast. Where's it gone? I'm going to apply some attack. So we could, in conjunction with the um with the step sequencer apply some both modulation from the sequencer and from the envelope for some extra whittle <laughs> uh, that's going a little bit fast so why don't we maybe change the speed here and tell this to cycle at four bars there we go so we're both using the step sequencer to modulate the cutoff and the um, audio envelope brightness whoa fun okay uh why don't well, whilst we're here why don't we turn on the compressor i really like this compressor i like compressors that kind of um you know hold your hand <laughs> and basically just go how much compression do you want but there's different types of uh, different types of compression here so let's i've applied this first compression which is called squash now I can be a little bit more confident with my volume and not worry about it sc screaming. So I'm gonna, I can obviously adjust how much compression I want on that. I'm just going to whack it up full. Let's have a look at some of these different compressions. Whoa. Whoa. I love these uh, little animations. This is really good. That is brutal. Let's have go for overkill. Goodness me. Goodbye, transients. Hello, f big sausage of audio. Lovely stuff. I'm going to put it back on squash, I think. <laughs> okay. So, and we've also... Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Um, so we've also got um, some glide down here, which is like how much it's going to glide between all the various points in the sequencer. So if I put that like up really high, I'm going to kill the envelope, uh, the audio envelope, and just use the sequencer. So you can actually see that it's kind of gliding between all of those values in the se in the sequencer. Yeah. But you could, of course, um, not use that at all and just kind of manually program in some glides yourself. So I could maybe delete that. How do I delete that node? So I assume it's, an, it's a node, right? Yeah. So I can... Delete, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can double click to delete them as well. Though. Yeah. Let's pull that one down. Yeah. So lots of fun to be had. Let's have a look at some of the other effects then. So um, I believe that if I, whilst this is all still in this state with all of this sequence stuff, I can go to a different effect. Let's have a look at the format. Yeah, so we can change the effect, but keep the sequence. That's kind of nice. This is the format filter. Nice. Cycle through them. Frequency shifter. Well, let's clear the envelope. So we'll go to edit and we'll go to clear effect. Okay, so now we actually have nothing loaded in the effect at all. So let's look at the various ways that we can access these effects. Let's have a look at this reverb, reverb two. Okay. Okay, so let's say that I made... Mm, 
interesting reverb algorithm there, yeah. Grungy, I like. I like a grungy reverb. So um, we yeah, let's have a look at what we can do with these macros. So we can macro these dials to some of the or many uh, parameters in each effect on each uh, channel, if you will. So let's do that. We're going to hit this little pen button. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to increase the uh, the sort of potentiometer, I guess, if you will. That's the, that's the, the mapping range, I suppose, um, of uh, that parameter, which is now currently mapped to that macro. If I turn that off, then you can see from this, the starting point of where the parameter currently is, I can now increase that or decrease that there. So if I put that all the way to zero and I sweep the macro, I'm going to sweep the Oh no, I'm just going to go halfway. Okay, so that's okay, so that's because if I increase that range there like that and get rid of that pen, now I can sweep the whole of that effect from this macro and then I could maybe macro that to something in Ableton or whatever MIDI controller. But it doesn't stop there. I could maybe macro that to also to the um the high high pass. So let's try that. And Let's turn that all the way down and let's actually macro that all the way. So now I'm not only sweeping this, the size of the reverb, I'm also sweeping the high pass filter. Let's see how that sounds. I could maybe also macro the uh, envelope amount. Let's try that. So let's put that all the way to zero. And let's say that we also want to macro the envelope amount at which it will be applied to the parameter. Let's have a look at it. So as we really, really quickly modulate that reverb, we get some splodge. <laughs> it's very nice. pretty good okay that's fun so um okay let's keep going i'm, I'm just actually just going to clear all of this again clear the effect uh i don't know if it's clear to the macro but let's clear the macro one for effect one okay all the macro is gone let's have a look at the looper so let's go back let's click on a channel and let's choose the looper so the looper um we can choose different loop types different loop times with the uh, with the sequencer here Okay, so um, that wasn't working, and that's because I haven't actually dialed in how much I want the, um, what are they calling it? I'm not too sure what they're calling this. It's a graph editor. It's an automation editor. But I haven't specified how much I want to dial in how much the automation editor affects this parameter. So I have to do that here with this dial. So you can see that now as I increase uh, the amount from the start position of the parameter, I'm now modulating that effect with the sequencer, so you can get some like get some glitch like this. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna the, the, this tempo dial here is how how often a new loop is recorded into the looper. So I'm currently going to set it. If you look down here, I think um, yeah, so one over two. That's how often it's um, getting sampled. But we can actually um, decrease the speed at which this cycles. Let's go for four bars. Yeah. We've got some smoothing here so we can make it more granular or get a little bit of crossfade in there. And there's also different ways in which the um, the graph editor or automation sequencer, whatever you want to call it, um, affects the parameter. So we've got unipolar, which is basically adding to um, the signal if we go in a positive range or m minusing if we go into a negative range. Whereas with this one, this is bipolar. So this is going to go either side 
of the um, of the parameter value. So if I decrease that, you'll see that it gets smaller either side. That's a very nice way to um, give a visual indication of how the parameter is being modulated. It's very nice. Um, okay, so now we're kind of going either way of the parameter with this sequence. And of course, we can just randomize the sequence anytime we want. Some more curves in here. We've got like this kind of stuff. Okay. So we've got different types of drive as well. Let's turn on and explore these different types of drive. Goodness me. Okay, well that's that's the end of that then. So we've got different types of drive, overdrive, tube, dynamic, adaptive. Interesting choice of drives here. Clip, rectify, crossover, X over. That's interesting. Punch, fold, crush. Yeah. And broken. What was that uh, crossover? No, was it punch? Or maybe it was crossover. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Well, stop for a second. Right. So, I mean, it doesn't even really begin there. We've only sort of scratched the surface. There are loads of different effects to choose from and we can have um, different effects. We can have up to 10 effects per, well, yeah, there are 10 slots. So you can have 10 different effects and they can be in whichever combination you want. So I'm just going to um, chuck a comb in number two, chuck a ring mod in number three, Phaser in four, uh, FM in five, uh, the decimator in six, um, maybe uh, the panning in seven, and in eight, let's put the formant, and I can't remember what I've done, <laughs> and the pitch shifter, let's put that in there. Number 10, let's put uh, reverb. So, and I'm just going to like randomize all these different slots with just some stuff so that I can explain how the sequencer works. So, let's just randomize all these things like this okay so let's turn on the sequencer so now we have down here we have a little step sequencer to choose when all of those effects come on so so currently right now effectively they're all on and we can turn them off like this i believe so anyway let's see okay so we'll introduce them one by one that's the looper. And that one, I can't remember. <laughs> so they generally all go in um, series from 1 to 10. But we can actually sequence when they're active using the sequencer. So let's maximize out the sequencer. Let's set the rate to something a little bit slower, like 1 over 2. And I think we need to fire it off with this play button here. There we go. Now it's going. There we go. So let's just draw in some more effects. Just, just, ah, oh, whatever. Just loads of them. We can shift it along. Shift the sequence along. Shift it back. Uh, we can randomize single channels. Let's cut everything everything so we can select a single channel and randomize that like this so I can just randomize events in there we can cut them with this select a channel cut it or if we if you select the top one and hold shift and then select the bottom one we can randomize the whole sequence okay let's go And then whilst that's going, we can just randomize some more, randomize their patterns. Oh, that's not really what I'm doing. I'm just saying, just click these a couple of times. Oh, look at that. That's fun. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, so there we go. And we can also choose the range at which it sequence around. So if we kind of just like this bit here, we can just tell it to cycle around this part. We can increase the speed of the sequencer or decrease it. Let's tell it to go at 16th notes. We can tell it to go every two bars. So very, very flexible sequencer there. And um, can we like move these around? No, if, we want, if you want to move them around, you do that up here. So we could swap four and two, we could swap six and eight and change the order very quickly of how you want the, um, the process to go. Okay, so, but let's clear the sequencer because um, we've still got more stuff to get through. Clear it, clear, did I say clear? Oh, hang on a minute, let's maximize that. Select them all and hit clear. Maybe there's a quick way to do that. I don't know. Maybe here? No? No? Okay, that doesn't matter. So, um, we don't have to use the sequencer, and in fact, we don't even really need to use the, the cycling um, sequencer for each effect. It can actually be triggered by incoming audio. Now, I need to remember how this works. That sounds weird. <laughs> Okay, let's turn all these off. What on earth is that? Is that the... <laughs> okay. All right, okay. So actually, I'm going to um, go a little bit more basic with this. So I'm actually going to maybe um, let's clear. Uh, how do I clear? Yeah, so we go menu, edit, uh, clear effects. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to use the um, low pass again. And I'm just going to draw in a simple kind of curve like this. And then I'm going to dial in how much. Nice. That's juicy. That low end. Nice little click there. Very percussive envelopes. Let's increase the resonance. With that compressor on that. Low end is uh, very safe. <clears throat> okay, so we don't need to use this cycling um, kind of sequencer here. Just got to remember how to turn it off. Um, I think we can use the audio. Yeah, okay. So we have this re-trigger thing here. We can choose whether it's re-triggered by audio or MIDI. I'm going to start with audio first. So let's see if I can get this working. Um, there we go. So when the audio goes above this signal, it activates a trigger, which then triggers the sequence of automation, which is kind of nice. So um, where we've got like high uh, transients in like in terms of volume, when they get above this threshold, we can fire off the sequence. I think that's, that's kind of a nice touch too. So it's kind of an envelope following sequencer. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, fun. We can dial in how much we want the curve to affect the parameter and the sort of center position. Let's try it with um, another effect. Let's clear this effect and let's load in maybe um, the comb filter here. Let's try and do the same thing with this. Wait, right, wait, let's go the other direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay, so, but yes, we also don't need to use the audio. We can, in fact, use um, MIDI. So, again, I've got to remember how to do this. I think we enable MIDI. Right. So you can see there, I've enabled the MIDI, and actually some MIDI notes have appeared on the effect. So that means that we can actually use MIDI notes 
to turn the effects on and off C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, etc, etc. So I'm going to rig up a MIDI track and I'm going to monitor it from my keyboard and let's have a look at the plugin and see what's happening. So I need to find the right octave. Uh, let's see. Okay, this might take a little bit of time. Okay, I realized what I needed to do. I needed to select the track and I needed to select Infiltrator. It looks like that there are 16... I'm not too sure what all these what these are. Maybe they're MIDI channels or... I'm not sure. Maybe that's a preset. I'm not sure. I'm just going to go for number one. So let's scale this back up and see if we can... There we go. I got it there. Did I? Yep. So now I can turn on this effect here with C on my MIDI keyboard. So if I turn it off, I think... Let's see. No, turn it on. Yeah. So I'm pressing C on my MIDI keyboard. And I'm triggering, I'm turning on the effect, which is being, which is the sequencer is being triggered by the incoming audio envelope. <laughs> it's quite, quite like, quite deep, really. I think. Let's try uh, the second one. Try this third one. Yeah. So that's going to start cycling when I press. This one is not reacting to uh, the incoming audio envelope. This is just going to use the sequencer, which is cycling. So when I, if I turn that down, turn the speed down a little bit, when I press go on the um, uh, on the keyboard, you can see that it's cycling. But you can also see that it is in fact picking up from where you left off. So I believe if we want to restart that sequence, each time we press a new MIDI note, we hit this button here. Yeah, now it's going to restart the sequence uh, each time I press a key. And then it sort of comes to a dead stop. So I think if we want it to loop, yeah, if we want it to, so it, it, you notice that when I, when I triggered it, when it gets to the end of the sequence, it stops. So if we want it to loop, we turn this button on, and then we can actually have a loop brace within the pattern, which is kind of fun. So let's see what that. I do like that pinging filter and oh my gosh right let's have a look at some presets let's see what we've got, we've got some presets in here um who have we got for, we look at all of these presets what is all this stuff pitch artists some artists hey i recognize some of these names defazed head phobe these are one man army guys from bristol back in the noughties I remember that. I think I remember that. How? What? Oh, what fun! Okay, let's uh, let's just try one of these presets. Wow. So you can see there's some stuff been macroed here. Oh, a different sequence. Whoa. We've almost got a bass line coming out of that. Crazy. Ah, yes. <laughs> Put his name in. That's funny. Jeez, goodness me. So you can, it looks like you can rename. Yeah, you can rename the macros as well. Pretty good stuff. So I think that'll do. That is Infiltrator by Devious Machines. There will be a link in the description. Very cool plugin for doing all kinds of um, crazy, crazy sound design. Naughty, naughty sounds. Um, you know, in conjunction with using it as a sort of sequencer plugin or as a audio reactive effects processor or like a performance-based thing that you can turn effects on and off with the keyboard or whatever MIDI controller you want. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, go and click the link and check it out. Get the demo. Maybe buy it. You know, it's, uh, it's all good stuff. All right.
See you next time for part five of whatever plugin that's going to be. <laughs> Cheers all. Bye.